This was a phenomenal interview on Club Shay Shay with Monique. She said she saw Oprah as a role model and it encouraged her because Oprah was also a plus size woman. And I feel very much the same way. But the more I find out about Oprah, the less I care for her. And I really thought that she catered too much to the opposite people. Uh, she said that people never liked her in school. And in 12th grade, she told a guy that wasn't his baby and they surrounded her to fight her. And she believes that if you're going to tell her something that puts your character in question, she's going to stand up for what's right and she's not going to cover up for you. Monique is 56 years old now. And she wanted to have a unique stage name, and that's why she spells it M-O apostrophe N-I-Q-U-E. She was in a special class, which surprised me, but she didn't wear a helmet. She had two naps, two lunches, and two recesses. And she never connected with school because it didn't connect to what her culture was all about. And this is the same thing that I said in school. Why do they portray all Blacks as savages in history? And I remember in the eighth grade, my social studies teacher was going to skip over Africa and I raised my hand and I said, I didn't think that was fair that you skip over Africa because I have a lot I want to share with the class. So she ended up letting us have a project. And you know, I never got my project back. I had some beautiful pictures of um, Africans coming up from Kush up to Egypt, showing that the Egyptians were originally Black people, African people, and I never got it back. And people always teased her. They would say, not the fat one, because they did not have expectations, and they counted her out. She was molested by her brother, unfortunately, and we are taught in a, as a culture that trauma is okay, and we swallow the pain. Her family relationship is strained. She wishes them well, but she keeps their distance. And she was really hurt when Oprah invited her family on the Oprah show without telling her and without her consent. And it's unfortunate that Monique said so many things about the Hollywood business 10 years ago or more, and people didn't believe her. They tried to fat shame her. They tried to call her bitter. They tried to call make her an evil Black woman. But none of this is really true. Now, when Taraji said it, they listened. She said that repercussions when you tell the truth, but now when you tell the truth, it's repercussions. Now we tell lies and get rewards. And she was really in pain when she saw Taraji P. Henson um, talk about how unfairly they were treated on the set of The Colored Purple. When Monique said that they got mad and they wanted to tell, you know, you're that big, fat, black and naming you this and naming you that. Uh, these, but she said, referring to Tyler Perry, and Oprah Winfrey, she said that these are our her heroes. They are the ones that did it. And we swallow our pain and we stress out. They have a hard time seeing a strong black woman, but they'll accept a broken woman. We're underserved, we're violated, we're exploited. And she said that her husband is her toolbox and he really puts confidence in her and he stands beside her. And we want to know, did Oprah face something similar in her career path? And did she believe that Monique should have been different or quiet? And she said there's a disconnect with Oprah. I think so, too. But the only one that's apologized to her in public was Lee Daniels. He apologized to her and to their children. Tyler Perry lied, and she had a recording proving that he lied and started a rumor that damaged her career. And even uh, Shannon Sharp was sent an audio of Tyler Perry, so he heard it. And other people have heard it. Even Kevin Hart wrote her a check to help her in her time of need, but he called Tyler, and uh, Tyler said he won't revisit it. Kevin told her to move past it, and he said that he will help her and partner with her in some business ventures, but um, he never answered her call. But she did pay him his money back. She also gave the recording to Al Sharpton. 
and he listened to it. But the next time she heard from Al Sharpton, I think that was at George Floyd uh, funeral. Al Sharpton said, we can fly Tyler Perry's private jet. Even Stephanie Mills called Tyler. A lot of people on her behalf tried to work out on her behalf. Kevin Hart tried to say it was a miscommunication from the manager, and it was two years and she never spoke to Kevin Hart again. She said it's difficult for her to work with, and it is a lie. Tyler does not want to confront or deal with her husband. And why is that? Because most people are intimidated by a strong black man. I know a lot of people were intimidated by my father, even so that the they wouldn't give him his proper paperwork when he was in a particular church organization. And then the bishop would say, well, you know, I know you are part of the church of God and Christ. You know, all that kind of foolishness. So I kind of understand. And what do we despise about Trump? I call him the Tangerine Mussolini. No matter what they do, we give him a pass. And we become what we despise the most. Oprah, you need to come back across the street and put the light on. You talked about Monique privately, and she's going to talk about you publicly. You watch Black women abused, and you say nothing. She said the Butler movie was off a tour, but Oprah went, wanted it and got it. A biopic of Richard Pryor was offered to Monique, but Oprah wanted it. You know, Oprah, you got enough money. Why did you do that? A man also tried to cut um, T.I.'s wife and her husband stopped it. D.L. Hughley, she also blasted him out. And she really believes that it's disrespectful that they don't uplift their Black people. And they play some kind of game, would you rather? Lee Daniels with a, a condom or Corrine without one. Um, Monique had to send a cease and desist. Her main point or theme throughout this interview was that when you're wrong, acknowledge you're wrong and make it right and be accountable. You can't tell me to let it go if you never lost anything and we need to get better as a people. And I agree. She said Cat Wims was correct. What she said about all these people. And she really gave her husband the props. This is her third marriage. She says she knows her place as the black wife now. And he didn't have to remind him that he is the leader. Uh, Tiffany Haddish. I'm really kind of surprised at her. She says she doesn't have a husband like Monique. But Tiffany had T, two DUIs and accused of grooming a child. And that's pathetic. I don't understand what people get out of that. She also said it's the insult when you have to audition when they already know you. The racism all across different professional fields. Monique said that she and Countess were paid $55,000 per episode and there were 22 episodes. That's a little bit over a million dollars. When most people get 100, 200, Three hundred thousand dollars per episode. That never would have happened if she was the, the lighter hue, and she won an Oscar and said she will not audition. They had no food or trailers. She had no Hollywood one on one. She didn't know she had her own parking space. She parked outside the gate and didn't know she had a parking space until one of the guards or one of the people told her and showed her that she had a parking space. She feels like she was the little fat black girl who didn't have friends in a slow class, in a slow class from Baltimore. We will never pick. Dark skin was not popular. And even Shannon Sharp said that he stuttered. And Monique said she was in, from the middle class and she wanted always to be famous. And um, time really did her healing. But she said she's a different mother now. Monique was allowed to be the headline on the show. And some more never discussed it. You know, I was really disgusted. If I knew the kings of comedy were like that, I wouldn't even have watched it. Because the, all of those kings of comedy got Rolex watches. They had better trailers, better food, and they were treated differently. 
and they never got the money right. And she even received a, a bad check. But Walter Lathan made it right. When they didn't get her money right, she got sick. And I don't blame her. And she really misses Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac was the real deal. They had four separate limos for the Kings of Comedy. But the Queens of Comedy, they wanted to put them all in the same limo. You just see this all over the place. If it's a male, they get paid more money. If it's a male, they forgive his indiscretions and he's still allowed to be promoted. If he's a male or if they're a lighter hue, it doesn't even matter if they're qualified. And I just feel like as a people, once people make it to the top, they forget about who helped them to get across. Uh, someone I know right now had a job opening at their school. I interviewed with the other person. They didn't even show up to the interview. There were two people, A and B, that's supposed to be in the interview. I interviewed with A, but B never showed up. Didn't call, didn't text. I knew this person all of my life. We even go to the same church and their parents live down the street from my family. And then I signed up for another interview. I selected the day they suggested. They couldn't show up, come to them, come to that interview either, you know. But I do. I don't do that. I try to lift black people up. When I was at the university, I invited people from my hometown to come and present, so they can get their name out there, get their face out there, and even possibly meet people and make connections. But they don't do the same thing for me. And that's how I feel about. I feel this way now about Tyler, Oprah, Kevin. They're going to only do so much. but they're not going to bend over backwards to help you out. Precious, the movie made Monique a star. And Monique told me, I don't work for free and I don't blame you. You know, Tyler, they didn't want to pay her for her extra appearances, but she gave, but he gave T.D. Jakes a million dollars. Make it make sense. She said she did her obligated contractual appearances and promotions, but she didn't go overseas and she wasn't going to Canada. And she declined Lionsgate again. And they called three times and they told her, what we, what we, can we do for Monique for her to come? And she never was paid to promote the film. They even told her to upgrade her room and give her another week in France. And so Monique went to the studio to see Tyler and Tyler clapped his hands. Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off. The Clapper, remember that promotion? And everybody scattered out the room. Tyler tells Monique she'll get more money if she promotes it, but she needs to be paid and they hug. And she, Monique said, you have to draw the line. And I feel that way in my career, I draw the line. You know, I developed some online courses when I was at the university. I saw people of the lighter hue get paid thousands, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, four digits, five digits, six digits, paid all this money to design online courses. But when I designed an online course, and it, I did a stellar job my first time, they did not pay me one dime. They said it was part of my contract and it is not part of my job description. They paid me the lowest and not at the high maximum or the highest salary that was offered for this job. They wanted me to keep office hours. Professors only come in during their office hours, but they wanted my office hours to be every day, eight to five. But I got around that because I started going out to the schools more to observe my students. And so when I left, I deleted my courses. I sure did because you didn't pay me for it. Don't you know they went to another university and got somebody to uh, pull it out of cyberspace? But you want to say that my work 
was not up to par. So why are you going into cyberspace and getting people to uh, get my work that you didn't pay me for? Why are you trying to get it back if I didn't do a good job? See, this is what I'm talking about. This is that that BS, this bull that we're talking about that go on to these professional worlds. It's just everywhere. Reggie Well was, was Oprah Winfrey's makeup artist, and she said she won't pay him Monique nothing. And the makeup artist asked her why. Why won't you just pay her? And she also challenged uh, Shannon Sharp to do Steve's interview again, invite Oprah and Tyler to come on the interview. And Monique said she and her husband would join them as well, and we could all talk together and get it straight. T.S. Madison really was her real friend because she called he, she called Lee Daniels and they knew someone else that had a mutual friend. I think they said Jamaica Carter. But anyway, they contacted Lee Daniels and got them to tell him to apologize to Monique. And she also talked about how much black directors were disrespected and they'll tell you one thing and they confuse the cast. And, you know, this is the problem with black people when they get a little bit of power. And I think the worst people to work for are black females and white females. They're the worst to work for. And so um, Monique went on to say he came in the trailer and said he's the the head NIC. And why are you bothering people because their shoes are off? That's stupid. They tried to tell them that their trailer smelled like gas. And thank God they weren't in there to... Um, thank God they didn't get killed. And they also addressed the rumor that Shannon Sharp only liked white women. And he said, all of my kids are black and they don't know where they get this um, information from. Monique is a trip. She said she wasn't a, a, a hoe. Her man told her she just had friendly, you know what, pootie, pootie tang tang. Her dad co-signed for her sister, but wouldn't co-sign for her. But she said she doesn't she sees now that it made her stand strong unapologetically. And she also told she had to get an old woman, an old black woman. And she also, <laughs> she blasted out Shaquille O'Neal saying, I'm not going to take advice from a man that has no woman. That is so funny. She said her first husband got the milk for free and they had boxing matches. The second husband helped pay bills. The third husband make her queen. And she is so correct when she said that they make money off our, our images. We as the Black people have been exploited for centuries and they have been making money from our resources, our culture, our talent, our ideas, our inventions. A Black man invented the potato chip. Do you think any of his uh, descendants are getting any of that money now. A black man invented the traffic light, the gas mask, the blood bank. Are they benefit? Are their descendants benefiting from these inventions and ideas? No. What kind of legacy are we leaving for our children? What message are we sending to our youth? Are we going to stand united? and help each other? Or are we going to continue to stab each other in the back? It's very unfortunate. And I really hope that Tyler, Oprah, and Monique get it together because what message are you sending to us? And it makes what Christian Keys say even more believable. These are questions that make you want to say, hmm. But overall, this was a great interview. I loved every minute of it. 
Monique is so sassy. And I really can relate to her when it comes to this fat shaming. They act like you're not worth anything just because you have a few love handles. But beauty is not only on the outside, it's also on the inside. Beauty 